Hey guys, Chris here with Project Nerf, and welcome to another exciting episode of Nerf ER, the show where we take modified or custom blasters that need a little help and get them back in the game. Uh, today, we've got a pretty sick Lepus Mark II. Let's get at it. Paging Dr. Chris. Dr. Chris to the ER. Paging Dr. Chris to the ER, please. All right, guys, so I have saved you the uh, little bit of agony of taking this thing completely apart here. It only holds, it, yeah, it has about eight screws, so it's no big deal. Let me read you what the customer stated here uh, in his letter. Uh, left motor burnout, uh, I included a fang motor and switches. I've had to rewire new switches in this thing three times before. Time to add a MOSFET, which he included. Um, so, uh, obviously he's had some electrical issues with this blaster before, and let's take a look. We found a couple of issues that I know are definitely adding to that. So, first of which, it's not just the one motor, they're both shot. So, we can throw those away. He did send one. That's okay. I keep them in stock, so we've got another one. Fortunately, he did send the switches. Now, the rep switch is completely burnt out on this blaster. It's torched. Uh, the pusher motor is good, and technically the upper uh, fire switch is still good, but um, we're going to go ahead and replace it, too. So, what we got into in the condition that we've had with this thing burning out switches, okay, first, guys, these little tiny switches are not rated for crap. Um, and Fang revamps, uh, if my memory serves, at full stall, pull 26 amps a piece. Um, and why is this important? Again, a little switch like this is not rated to carry any real amperage anyway, so MOSFET is definitely going to be the way to go, but uh, why have the switches been burning out? Well, there's a couple of things. If we flip the top cover over, and look right here, guys, you can see plain as day... Uh, that the flywheel on that side has been rubbing. So what we've had, at least for a while here, is one of the motors, and here's the flywheel, and again, you can see the rub marks on it. So we've had at least one motor in a partial stall. So because it's rubbing, it's working harder, drawing more amperage, and uh, thus burning switches out faster. So obviously we've got to go ahead and get this taken care of, sand it back down and cleaned up, and make sure that we have proper clearance on our flywheels before we put this thing back together. Uh, so with that, I'm going to start cleaning this up uh, and getting it sanded back down flat. Uh, go ahead and install our new motors in the cage and get those uh, taken care of, and then I'll uh, get back with you. All right, so I used a razor blade and scraped down those heavy ridges on that, and then I sanded it, and it looks a little scuffed up, but I finished that with 1,000 grit paper, guys, and it is smooth as a baby's behind there, which is what we want. All right, so to avoid this in the future, and like I said, you can see on the top of that flywheel uh, where it was rubbing. So let's uh, let's talk about motors here for a second. Fang revamps, a lot of the Neo motors have a pretty high crest right there at the bearing. And uh, when you put them in, they tend to stick out proud of the top of the uh, cage, which uh, can cause your flywheel to set up just a tiny bit, which uh, we don't want in this since we know we've had an issue there. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put these uh, rubber or silicon isolators in, uh, which will help space that motor just a fraction. We're only talking about a millimeter, but that makes a lot of difference sometimes, guys, if you've got one that's uh, had a similar problem. So we're going to go ahead and put the isolators in, get our new motors in, and then we'll talk about how we're going to wire this thing up. Okay, so... We've got our cage back together, and you can see here I uh, used my razor and very carefully scraped off the ridges that were in the top of the flywheel and then sanded that down with 1,000 grit paper. Again, looks a little rough, but it is very, very smooth. Same thing here. So hopefully we don't have those same clearance issues. If we do, we'll do a little extra sanding and grinding and make everything work. We've already polarity tested the cage. Both of the motors are running great, so now it's time to wire this bad boy up. So... We've got our little MOSFET here and uh, the two micro switches. So, let me grab a piece of paper and I'll draw this out for you uh, so that you can see exactly what I'm going to do with the wiring. So, give me a minute there and I'll get right back to you. 
All right, guys, hopefully this is going to make a little sense to you. Uh, I tried to organize it in such a fashion that you could understand easy. Okay, so these MOSFETs have power in, power out, and then two tabs on the bottom for the switch. So that's very, very easy. We're going to run our battery to the MOSFET, the cage to the MOSFET, and then the rev switch to the MOSFET. Okay, um, so no problems there. Now, to get our electronic safety on the fire what we have to do is come off the back side of the mosfet between the mosfet and the cage with a jumper wire down to our fire control switch okay and then run that up to the pusher the negative we're just going to jump off uh somewhere in there it doesn't matter like i said i have it represented here right off the battery just jump over to the negative on the switch because we only have to switch one side of it so again battery to mosfet mosfet to cage rev switch to mosfet very, very simple. No problems there. And then what little fanciness there is here, again, our negative is going to jump over here to the cage. The output side of the MOSFET, again, between the FET and the cage, we're going to run a wire down to our fire trigger. And then run the other side of that up to the pusher motor. And what that's going to do is not allow the pusher motor to go unless power is being supplied to the cage. Uh, so, essentially, we're going to be running all three motors off of this one MOSFET, um, but they're pretty durable, um, so I don't foresee having any issues with it. So, anyway, I'm going to get it wired up and uh, see if we can make it work. All right, after much frustration and cussing, I've got it rewired, and, uh, you know, it is an exercise in cable management here. But I've got uh, all the leads coming up through. I put a little hot glue in here to hold everything down. The MOSFET's down in there. I had to make an adapter, because uh, this is a JST-N. Uh, I don't have any LiPos with a JST connector on them, so I made a little adapter. And this is the smallest 2S LiPo that I even own, guys. Um, and it just barely fits. However... It works. So, uh, anyway, let's get it buttoned up and uh, run a couple of mags through it and see what it does. All right, guys, forgive the uh, the wind and the traffic. Uh, we've got her all buttoned up. Got a mag in here. Let's see if it goes. <laughs> Emptied that one. <laughs> Emptied that one. There, it works. All right, guys, yeah, it, uh, it works. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm very pleased about that. Um, this is my first time ever working on one of these, and there's a reason for that. Um, I'm not a fan of the design as a whole. Um, while I understand the need to have a compact, uh, full auto blaster to mag dump in a pinch or something like that, this one's got a couple of things with it that I don't necessarily approve of. The first of which being the exposed micro switches. I don't like that. Um, you know, it is very susceptible to moisture or anything like that. Not my thing. Secondly, they could have made this thing a couple inches longer uh, to support the out of darts uh, graphene lipo. And my reasoning for that is uh, it's pretty simple. Okay, if we uh, take a look here, like I said, this is a very small uh, 30C 450. Yes, 450 milliamp battery. Okay, so it's, it's a tiny battery. Technically, it does not carry enough current to run these fingers if you get a stall condition. Um, where versus the out of darts, graphene does. And under amping, these motors is bad, guys. Uh, that's not a good thing. You really want to run the proper amount of amperage to them. So uh, I don't like the super small battery compartment. They could have stretched it out a little more and uh, made room. There's no way you could get that in here. Um, Fine. Hold it here and set that against the block. You can see it would stick out well past. So this could have been a couple inches longer um, to accommodate a larger battery and would have been good. Make no mistake, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of people that are fans of the design and think it's pretty cool. But for me, for a compact uh, flamethrower kind of pistol, I'll take my Pathfinder. Um, a lot more features built into this blaster uh, than this one. And yes, it is larger, but it's not particularly big. It's way smaller than a Strife or something like that. It's got a trigger safety. 
It's got a battery gauge, it runs 180s, and it also has a very agreeable rate of fire. So for me, uh, Levis versus Pathfinder, I'll take the Pathfinder all day. But uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions about the wiring or anything like that, I tried to lay it out good on that paper so you could see it. But uh, you know, any questions at all, hit me in the comments. Let me know what you think. Which one of these would you prefer uh, to take into battle with you? Um, if you haven't done it yet, guys, hit that subscribe button. Turn on notifications. we got a lot of great content coming up. Check us out on Facebook. Check out the shop. And until next time, guys, this is Chris for Project Nerf saying have a blast. Hey!